www.meetradio.com. Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Chuck Lott. And I'm Rosie Flory. And we're back here on the weekly show. We're in week two. It looks like we survived. Yeah, we, <laughs> we did. I'm shocked, but we're alive. <laughs> so did you have fun last week? I did. I had a great time. Being good. on the show with you is fun. Did you have fun? I had a blast. Good. I had a blast. This is, <laughs> you know, this is what I absolutely love doing. Um, so what, what did you do over the weekend? Wow, what did I do this weekend? I can't even remember. It feels like forever ago, and it, it was like three days ago. Um, hmm. I went to see Leo Laurenti. Okay. She performed at Napper Tandy's over the weekend, and then I kind of just hung out with my family a lot. I had work on Sunday, and then my whole family came over, and that was really nice. Oh, that's It's nice. always good to like see everybody, yeah. and I have like little yeah. cousins, so and they grow up so fast. Oh my you wouldn't even realize like like that. Yeah, just every like time I go old. back home, it's like. 47 more kids are like Aww. 13 and above. And I'm like, wait, what happened? The last time I saw you, you were like <laughs> at my things, knees. I know. And, now, and that's what they used to say about us. That's like crazy. every time I would see my family, be like, oh, you got so big. And now it's just like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> <laughs> that is the, the age old question. I, I love that question. <laughs> How was your weekend? Uh, it was pretty eventful. I, um, I actually announced for the Women's Big East Soccer Championship down wow. in St. John's. Yeah. Um, See, it that's was an exciting weekend. Well, you know, it was it was really fun. Um, I I'm a fan of soccer. I really am, and our women's soccer team is pretty good. But this was a, a neutral event. Um, the the entire Big East. Um, we hosted it at St. John's, and I got to announce the semifinals and the finals. Uh, both semifinal matches went into double overtime and shootout. What? So we were there all night long. It was ridiculous. Were you rooting for like any one team in particular, or were you trying to be neutral? I had to be neutral. You I had to, to be neutral. I couldn't be. even wear my but deep St. John's. Down, are you ever neutral? Well, deep really? down is St. John's. You know, that's <laughs> okay. that's, that's that's where I work. Off the um, record. And then Sunday, the, the final uh, went to uh, DePaul, DePaul University. Congratulations on uh, being the 2014 Woo! Women's Soccer champ Tournament Champion. That's great. Um, the Big East Conference. Um, so that was good. I mean, other than that, um, I had a pretty low-key weekend, but that wasn't low-key at all. No, Three different exciting. trips to Queens. It was, it was pretty crazy. Oh, well, you know what? Good for you. Yeah. That's great. It's a lot of gas. And good for those women. Yeah. It is a lot of gas, yeah. though. Going back and forth to Queens is a lot. <laughs> Especially from all the way out here. I know. That's bad. I know. Um, well, well, we'll get into what we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, today on the weekly show, we'll be discussing some new building codes in France. Uh, is Monster Energy Drink really a product of Satan, Clowns for Christ, and much more? Now, stick with us. We're going to have a pretty exciting night, and we'll be right back.
world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Ravio.com. The Bully News Network, coming soon to Enravio.com, an all-new weekly show highlighting the latest news and information about the epidemic of bullying. Join Scott Hislop as he explores the issues with Dr. Michelle Golland, along with parents, teachers, and school officials, and many others affected by bullying. We'll tell stories together and work toward finding a solution to this rampant problem. The Bully News Network premieres Tuesday, September 9th at 6 p.m. only on Enravio.com. Hey everyone, it's Jenna LaCari. Make sure you vote for me on inravio.com slash inravioweekly. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. InRavio.com wants you. InRavio provides the best in TV, film, post-production, and so much more. And we're growing. Right now, we're looking for a team of pros that can join us. So what are you waiting for? We need show hosts, production crew, marketing gurus, sales experts, audio engineers, lighting, visual effects, and camera crews. We want you. Go to InRavio.com backslash join the team. Welcome back to the weekly show. So I know last week we talked a little bit about Halloween because it had just passed, but we were just having a quick conversation about things that people found in their Halloween candy. That is like sick. Someone, so, it, you go, go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we found out that um, there were bullets in milk dud boxes. Kids are getting razors, toothpicks. I mean. That's crazy. See, I, I was, handing out Halloween candy at my house and I was wondering like where are all the kids I don't understand I felt like no kids were out and you know what I guess that's why <laughs> you know I think trick-or-treating people are scared I think I don't, yeah I don't think it is what it used to be yeah no you know, we not. used to get excited about going trick-or-treating we used to you know get yeah. huge bags and buckets and, and just bring home tons of candy and yeah. now everyone's so scared because we have crazy people in the country but I mean growing up though are, my parents always told me like to check my candy before I ate oh, yeah. it so I guess it's not new but I think that because of like social media and stuff, mm -hmm. it's just so much more public like publicity about it yeah. that like people are finding out. I don't know. It's I, I don't know. We we need to get it together because that I mean these are kids. You know these kids don't need to be learning about stuff like that no. that young. That that's unfortunate for all the kids. I mean I, I hope that everyone enjoyed their candy over Halloween. Uh, I only had a little bit. Um, <laughs> He's such a liar. <laughs> they have candy upstairs in the studio, and he took a whole handful home with him. This handful. <laughs> it's um, a big hand. <laughs> anyways, so since we're on holidays, yeah. which holiday is next? It, happy <laughs> Veterans Day to everyone. Veterans yeah. Day was yesterday. Yes. Thank you to all the vets who who put their lives on the line to battle for our freedoms. But yeah. um, what's the next holiday? Well, technically, it's Thanksgiving, but really, uh -huh. it's Christmas. 
See, Thanksgiving, <laughs> I apologize, Thanksgiving, you are the redheaded stepchild of holidays. It's like after Halloween, we That's go it. right into Christmas. No, there's like no month of November. No. I, everyone I, needs to start buying Christmas presents. It makes me sick, actually. I went to Starbucks, and uh, we already had Christmas cups and Christmas blends, and mm -hmm. everything's peppermint now. And I'm like, wait, Everything's what peppermint. Happened? Oh, but I do like peppermint. Oh, my goodness. It is a good, <laughs> it is like a heartwarming time of year. That's fine, but I'm more of a Thanksgiving guy. Are you? You like to give thanks for all your... I am extremely thankful. The good I, things in your life. I, I think that's very I am nice. very thankful. Good. Well, you know what? I think it's time for world news. So be it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> French officials announced a law change that will allow homeowners to install toilets in their kitchens and living rooms. Minister of Housing Sylvia Pinel and Minister of Ecology Seglion Royal announced in the French government's official journal on November the 8th they're doing away with the law that requires toilets to be kept in kitchens, or excuse me, to be kept separate from kitchens and living rooms. The ministers wrote that they were doing away with the prohibition of direct communication between the bathrooms and kitchens and living rooms as a part of a process of simplification of regulations. The decree goes into effect on December the 1st. Now, I don't know why on earth anyone would put a toilet next to their kitchen. I know why. Or in their living room. No, no. Taco Tuesday. Okay, but that's the dining room. Hello. And I don't want to smell that when I'm cooking. And if I'm in the living room, I don't want to smell Listen, that when I'm French watching TV. Listen, French people have a completely different way of life than we I do. I understand that. I, okay? I do understand that. They're, they're just a lot more open. I could see why they would want their... And especially in Paris. I lived in Paris for a little while last summer. Those rooms that they live in, they're tiny. Living space is not big in Paris unless you're like a billionaire. And, and that is what So you gotta I, have the bathroom in their kitchen? On like that I hand, I understand. Yeah. Because there, there isn't a lot of space. I understand mm -hmm. that, but... I don't know. I just can't. It's like having a studio apartment. I know studio <laughs> apartments are big around New York, yeah. um, but that's just something that I can't do. I'm six foot three, 230 pounds. You are not <laughs> going to catch me in a studio apartment because I do not want to turn around and have my toilet and my bathroom in the same place. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's valid. So that's a valid point. France. Hey, man. Would you put your like like I know some people have bathrooms attached to their master bedrooms. Would you do that? Oh, that's fine. So you can that, sleep next to where you poop, but you don't want to like. Okay, but the door you can close the door. Okay, I get it. Okay. Yeah. We didn't d deep. We didn't dive further into the law. <laughs> there could be a bathroom next to the kitchen and the living room, but they just said toilet. Oh. So initially, I'm I didn't thinking even realize that. toilet. Okay. Okay. Stove, toilet. No. Okay. Now, that's if it's gross. stove, then bathroom, door. Yeah. That's Fan? what I was thinking, That's but I fine. guess I'm wrong. <laughs> but I'm not. Okay, so all right. All right, see that? That's how the law works, folks. You can see what you want to see. It's, it's written there. That's true. But you can interpret it any way you want to. Mm. <laughs> Crazy how that works. Rosie? A London museum that opened to the public Wednesday contains ancient sex toys and human waste, purported to be from celebrities including Amy Winehouse. The Victor Wynne Museum of Curiosities, Fine Art and Natural History, which opened its doors in the Hackney neighborhood, contains such very items as Picasso prints, taxidermy animals, ancient Chinese sex toys, 19th century babies preserved in formaldehyde, <laughs> and McDonald's Happy Meal toys. The museum is being operated in the Last Tuesday Society, an 18,000 member group Wynne described as a social organism. Wind, who told The Guardian he wants to get the whole world into his museum, said the collection also includes the urine of actor Russell Crowe, which he says was a gift, and excrement he attributes to pop star Kylie Minogue and late singer Amy Winehouse. I charge five pounds, approximately $7.90, for a sniff, Wind says of Winehouse purported waste. The museum will present an incoherent vision of the world, displayed through wonder, enclosed within a tiny space, he told the Daily Beast. No attempt is made at classification and comprehensiveness. Instead, the museum focuses on the pre-enlightenment or origins as a museum as wonder cabinet, 
a mirror to a world so suffused with miracles and beauty that any attempt at categorization is bound to fail. However, Wynne said that at the end of the day, the main idea of the museum is to cheer people up. So what makes you more happy than smelling Russell Crowe's urine? <laughs> um, Nothing. Nothing. Russell, you know what? If, if it was Except Maximus Amy Decimus Meridus, <laughs> excrement. It, that's pretty exciting. To each his own. Because <laughs> I, I don't, I can't, I'm not even a fanatic like that. Like, I mean, I have people that I admire a lot in the world, but I'm not a fanatic. I'm not going to like, if someone gives me a high five, I'm not going to not wash my hand for like, you know, a yeah. week or whatever. Like, I just, I mean, I don't know, that's in me. a way, I don't think it's like disgusting that like they have a deceased celebrities. Whatever. It's not disgusting, but uh, to have but why was, Russell Crowe's. Why urine, was that a gift? It's kind of weird. Did Russell Crowe like do that and like gift. mailed it to him and I, was like, Merry I, Christmas? I don't think it was a gift. He, he may or may not have been a stalker and accidentally ran into Russell Crowe at a party. Russell Crowe, you know, went out back and. But you know what? It's kind of cool because maybe the way we'll know if we ever make it big is if someone like finds our dirty tissue and puts it in a museum. I'm in the wonder cabinet. That's my booger. Look, if you find my dirty <laughs> tissue and you want to keep it, please tweet me so I can send you something clean, something personal. I'll make it <laughs> all for personal. you. I just don't want you to have book. dirty tissue. <laughs> I'm not a scrapbooker, but I'll scrapbook if if, it, if that means you not having my dirty tissue. I will scrapbook for you because that's not. You're mm -mm. such a good person. I, I'll try. <laughs> it, you know, there there are a few left in the world. There are. All right, so we were talking about interesting things, right? Yeah. From back in the day. Yes. The bedroom of a slain World War One soldier in France has remained as he left it for nearly a century after his parents asked it remain untouched for 500 years. The Bellabre village bedroom of Hubert Rochereau, who died at the age of 21 on a battlefield in Belgium on April the 26th of 1918, has stayed as he left it before he went to war, after his parents had a contract written into the home's deed stipulating that any future resident of the home must keep the bedroom as it is for 500 years. The only addition to the room since Rochereau left is a cylinder of soil from the battlefield where he lost his life. Daniel Fabre, the current owner of the home, said he has abided by the wishes of Rochereau's parents, but he feels a little connection with the soldier. I like to say I live in his house, but not with him, Fabre told the BBC. I don't feel any kinship with him. He was young, a military officer, and I imagine him to be quite provincial perhaps even narrow-minded, but it's part of the history of the house, so I keep it. That's very French. Again, <laughs> I, I like that we're talking about France today. I love France. That's if I could live French. there, I would. No, it is, because they like to preserve things. I mean, if you go into Paris, nothing's extremely new. Mm -hmm. Even the Eiffel Tower is like frowned upon by many Parisians. They think it's not as aesthetically pleasing as all of the beautiful I old suppose. homes. So I get why they would want to preserve it and, I mean, and why that Frenchman would say, well, I'll just keep it because it's history. It is history. Yeah. And I mean, it, Veterans Day just passed. Yeah. I mean, I think the same thing would happen in the States if there was a soldier who, who died during World War I or, or even before um, who asked to keep something the same the way as it was when he was there. Mm -hmm. I think that as Americans, we would honor that, yeah. that wish as well. So. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's crazy, but, you know, you know, him, him feeling a, a bit of kinship with the soldier, you know, I think that's, that's, that's fun. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it at that. That's fun. Okay. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, a tabloid news report claiming Led Zeppelin singer Robert Plant turned down $795 million from Richard Branson to reunite the band is rubbish. Plant's publicist said, The Daily Mirror claims that Branson offered 500 million pounds, approximately $795 million, to the band in exchange for Zeppelin playing 35 dates in three cities, London, Berlin, and then in New Jersey. The billionaire reportedly was planning to let the band use one of his jumbo jets, saying that he'd rename it the Starship and would sell seats on the plane to fans for 100,000 pounds each. 
He was even going to title the plane Staircase, the Stairway to Heaven, after the famous song. The money would have been split between the three remaining members. The late drummer John Bonham's son was to play with the band, according to The Mirror. The Mirror also said fellow bandmates Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones agreed to the tour immediately, as did deceased drummer John Bonham's son, Jason Bonham. Plant puts the plans to a halt by ripping up the contract in front of the would-be tour promoters. That's very rock star of him. <laughs> the Mirror Report apparently isn't that far from reality. It just has a lot more flourish. Band member Jimmy Page told The Guardian newspaper earlier this year that everyone would love to play more concerts for the band. Just playing games and I'm fed up with it, to be honest with you. At the end of September, Page said a reunion was no longer a possibility or on the cards. That's I, interesting. I think that's... Uh I think a lot of people are pretty sad about that. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, they're a very famous band, but <laughs> also the three, like they're gonna play in London, Berlin, and then New Jersey. <laughs> hey, sorry, Jersey. <laughs> I'm not from New York, so I don't, I don't, I don't treat you like that. Um, but yes, London, Berlin, and like, New maybe Jersey. that's why he ripped it up. You know, I mean, and it is tough because you can cross the bridge and go to the garden. Yeah. And play the garden, sell out the garden. I'm pretty sure they'd sell out the garden. Oh, they definitely um, would. But, I mean, I know there are a lot of fans out there that are pretty pretty bummed about that. But he's got to have some other reason behind not Maybe doing it. Maybe he just it. doesn't feel like it. Hey, every once in a while, I'm there are things tired. that you fall in love with and you grow apart. You grow away. Yeah, and, it happens. You know, things happen and... Uh, Maybe he just doesn't want to be a part of the band anymore. <laughs> Whatever it is, I mean, I've done, you know, I've walked away from things before that I, that I thought that you I loved. loved yeah. so. Are you a Led Zeppelin fan? or? I mean, I'm not a fan. I like their music, right. you know, but I'm not like, whoa. Yeah. You know. Would you go to Jersey to see them? No. Okay. I'm not a, dare you I You heard say it here it. first. I'm not a concert. <laughs> Nothing against Led Zeppelin. I'm really not a concert guy. I don't want to oh, really? stand up. I don't want to stand up for hours and sing songs. No. No. I think it's fun. No, if this was a lounge, like if there was a nice lounge where, you know, there were couches or nice seats, dinner, whatever. But Imagine that, like intimate dinner with Led Zeppelin. Well, maybe not that Led Zeppelin, cool. but the one concert <laughs> that I went to, Brian McKnight, it was back in the day when I lived in Milwaukee. Um, it was in a nice lounge. Yeah. There were couches. We had tape. We had dinner. We had drinks. Brian McKnight's on stage, chilling with his guitar. He killed it the whole night. And... That's awesome. I sat down like the entire sang night. to your soul all night. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, and it was Brian it. McKnight. I mean, if you know anything about Brian McKnight, yes. Um, <laughs> but I'm not I'm not trying to stand up for hours and sing songs. Cause if I want to sit down, I'm not gonna be able to see anything. That's true. You know, so I'm nah. I'm not a concert guy. It's people call me weird or you know, you don't go to concert. I don't go to concerts. I don't think it's weird. I just love concerts. That's fine. But I don't think it's weird. <sighs> no. Nah. I can see why you wouldn't like it. Yeah, I just—it's just a certain personality type. Like, I don't have a problem standing up for a couple hours and like watching people say. I, I think it's fun. Yeah. Well, uh, we're gonna pay some bills. Uh, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. For 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. In Revio.com. In Revio.com. Hey guys, this is Kyle Melnick over at the Weekly Show. Make sure you vote for me over at InRavio.com/slash InRavio Weekly.
The Bully News Network, coming soon to Enravio.com, an all-new weekly show highlighting the latest news and information about the epidemic of bullying. Join Scott Hislop as he explores the issues with Dr. Michelle Golland, along with parents, teachers, and school officials, and many others affected by bullying. We'll tell stories together and work toward finding a solution to this rampant problem. The Bully News Network premieres Tuesday, September 9th at 6 p.m. only on Enravio.com. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Radio.com. Good evening, Internet, and welcome back. So, what's really going on behind the popularity of monster energy drinks? I don't know. Tell me. Do you think it could be Satan? It could be. <laughs> we, we did something like that last week. So, Satan, I don't know what Satan's problem is, but anyways. Yeah, he's all. There's one woman that seems to think so. In a video that went viral on Facebook and YouTube over the weekend, the un unidentified woman recites a series of conspiracy theories about the drink, specifically the notion that the M in the monster logo is really made up of a Hebrew six repeated three times. Yes, if you're keeping track at home, that would be 666. Still have doubts? She's claiming more clues, such as claiming the line through the O in monster is really part of a cross, which represents the Antichrist. She says that when someone drinks from a can and tilts it upside down, the reverse cross represents witchcraft. Ooh. Bottoms up <laughs> and the devil laughs. laughs. Something to think about. Many of her complaints about the drink have circulated online before. Some users on the Snopes message board are reporting similar messages circulating on Facebook in 2009. However, none of the others have spread this quickly. Monster has not responded to the numerous people sharing the video on its Facebook page. However, when these religious claims have, have surfaced in the past, others, including members of the Christian community, have pointed out that the so-called number of the beast is not three sixes, but 666, as in 666. That would not be represented in Hebrew by a six repeated three times. Also. Difficult to explain would be the number, or excuse me, would be the fact that Monster Beverage Corporation, which owns the Monster Energy Drink, they also own Peace Tea. It's the devil in disguise. But he I mean, comes in many forms, even peaceful tea, <sighs> to See, lull you to sleep at night and then take over <laughs> your dreams and thoughts. That, that's really scary. <laughs> Did you come it, up with that on your own? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. So, Drink a lot of Monster. There are some. There are a lot of conspiracy theories in the world. And I mean, she had to pull that one out of somewhere because I've never looked at an energy drink like that, mm -hmm. but I'm not a fan of energy drinks, so I don't really mess with Monster. I'm not a fan of it. I think that if you're tired, you need to go to bed. You don't need to stay up all okay. night and whatever. Turn up. I don't, no, go to bed. And there are other ways to get energy. You don't have to be drinking that poison, I think. 
Yeah. It's gross. It tastes funny. It Uh-oh. leaves like a weird feeling Uh-oh. in your mouth. Ma- th- She's about to have some enemies out there. Um, I mean, if it's the satanic monster, then that's fine. He can hate me, but. That's crazy. I don't know. I'm just not a fan of energy drinks. Well, I, I'm not. I'd rather have a cup of coffee. I don't even like coffee, and no. I live in New York. <laughs> I, you were at Starbucks. You said it earlier, so don't even lie. Grande, you no water chai, spice. people. No water chai. <laughs> pumpkin spice. <laughs> no, 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 no. No water chai? No water chai. What does that mean? It's a it's chai milk? tea. Chai tea with, with milk. milk. Sounds good. It, I love chai tea. I do, too. Yeah? It's very tasty. Yeah. It good. is. It's good. my drink of choice. Yeah. It's my drink of choice. So... We've been, we just talked about Satan. We're going to get away from Satan. That's yeah. two weeks in a row. We're going to get away from him. Yeah. Rosie, All right, I need so some this God is what we life. God moves in strange and mysterious ways. Amen. And even clowns around sometimes. At least some followers at a little-known Methodist ministry like to clown around. A loosely-knit group in Ohio known as Clowns for Christ are doing the Lord's work with puppets as well as prayers. The followers' work revolves around performing for families and children dressed in clown costumes. Members tell biblical stories with balloon animals, puppets, and other props. Judith Ziveth, who's been active in the group for 17 years, says their silly costumes serve to break down barriers. You could do anything in a clown costume, she told Vindy.com, adding that anything is appropriate for church. You can okay. do anything in a clown costume but and still to scare the crap out of me. I was just about to say, that what about the people who so are scared weird. of clowns? I mean, I know so many people that are scared of clowns, and it's like, hey, man. You know how this all happened? This, this woman who started this thing, she probably grew up in a house where they had that picture of that sad clown with the one tear. <laughs> And like over her kitchen dining room table and every morning she would wake up and eat her cereal and have to stare at that clown and she was like maybe this is a sign that's how that happened you know what i'm learning more and more about her every <laughs> week um i just I, I don't know i mean it's it's a great yeah, thought look at that clown. It's, i know it's creepy right it's a great thought but i, I think there's something more universal than clowns um you know what? puppets you can do puppets like sesame street you know Everybody grew up Big in Sesame Bird. Street. Right. Big Bird for Christ. Snuffleupagus. Big you Bird lays an egg, and then inside is like a passage of the Bible. Big Bird for Christ. Get her. She, she needs to be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to be a writer on Sesame Street. I think we got something there. Uh, so uh, recently, a woman held up a sign at a Garth Brooks concert in Minneapolis. This was Friday night. That made the singer stop everything mid-performance to honor his fan. Teresa Shaw held up a sign during the, during the song, The Dance, and it read, Chemo this morning, Garth tonight, enjoy the dance. She needed a break from her breast cancer treatment and decided to go to Brooks's concert with her 19-year-old daughter. Yes, everyone, please get your tissues out right now. Shaw was quoted as saying, I, just, I was just hoping he would see it and maybe, maybe, I could get him and get it signed. But Shaw got a lot more than she bargained for when the next thing she knew, another usher came up to her and they said, follow us. They took her and her daughter to the front, right in front of them. I have chills. That's yeah. so beautiful. This is a, a beautiful story. Now, Garth Brooks serenaded Miss Shaw, kissed her on her forehead, and handed her his guitar. He held up her sign and then he said, you have all my strength. You have everybody's strength in here. You go and kick cancer's ass. That, I mean. That's amazing. Now, if you didn't know, if you're not a Garth Brooks fan, uh, fan, his mother and his sister both died from cancer. So, you know, when he saw that sign, definitely stopped everything, brought her up, gave her what she wanted, gave her more than she wanted. And, I mean, that, Garth Brooks, hey man. It's such just a terrible, terrible disease. And, it is. and to battle that, it, it's, hor- it's horrifying. But, um, and you know, Garth Brooks could have saw that sign and not done anything. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a true testament to his character that he actually mm. brought the woman up and gave her that love and the support that she, she wanted and needed. And I think that's a beautiful story. He appreciates his fans. You know, and that's, I mean, that, I think that's something that doesn't happen that often now. Uh, yeah. but, but Garth Brooks is, he's an older uh, celebrity. So 
he understands the connection mm -hmm. that that he has and that he could have with his fans. I so, mean, we're I mean, all just people. It doesn't matter how right. famous you are. At the end of the day, right. you know, you're still human. a human being, just right. like everybody else. So I think right. it's really nice that he did that for her. Yeah. I think that was awesome. Good job, Garth. Yeah. <laughs> so now let's go to Rick Everly for what's going on in the local music scene with this week and next week. I'm Rick Everly, the host of This Week and Next Week. The holidays are coming up, and if you're looking for something to do to get in the holiday spirit or just take your mind off the stress that comes with the holidays, I've got just the ticket. First off, tomorrow night at the Emporium in Patchogue, we've got top 40 artist Little John bringing his hits, Turn Down For What? Bend Over, that one I want to sing, and many more to his birthday celebration with his guest star, Carlos Melange. Or you can check out the Pamela Betty Band with Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Richie Cannata at The Space in Westbury. Friday is a big night at the Emporium with the return of Mike Del Judas and Big Shot at 10 p.m. On Saturday, there's something for everyone. The Paramount Huntington is featuring Emblem 3 with special guests Spencer Sutherland and Lion in the Main, while at the Emporium is their traditional and very highly rated Saturday Night Dance Party featuring Smooth City, Click the Cosigner, Fox Beats, and then Revolution in Amityville. It's the Dio tribute band, Neon Knights with An Ultimate Rush, Stainless Leather, and That Metal Band. On Sunday, you have a choice of the ultimate Led Zeppelin experience with Zoso at the Emporium or the Out Late Tour with Jacob Whitesides at Revolution. For you comedy fans, on Monday at Revolution, check out the roast of Terry McNeely. Sam Hunt, the writer of Kenny Chesney's Come Over, and Keith Urban's Cop Car, and Billy Currington's We Are Tonight, and also a performer of country top 40 hit Leave the Light On. Man, this guy, I'm sorry, Leave the Night On. This guy's really doing uh, some serious stuff. He's making his Long Island debut performance on Wednesday at the Emporium in Patchogue. For more information about this and other shows, and to win tickets for all of these shows and more, you can go to inradio.com slash contest. I'm Rick Eberly. You can check me out at rickeberly.com. Thanks. Tweet me up, at Rick Eberly. Welcome back, everyone. So, it's Wednesday night. It is Wednesday night. What do you normally do on Wednesdays? <laughs> Good observation. Um, on Wednesdays, we wear pink. If you don't know what movie Clearly. that's from, I'm going to be so mad at you. <laughs> uh, uh, <sighs> she said it. She said it in the headpiece. It's Mean Girls. Look, I'm not, no. You can't sit with us. That's that's so fetch. <laughs> and I only know that because it everybody, oh, that's so Do you knew fetch, okay. I didn't yeah, watch the movie. I, okay, after this. We mean are girls not special. watching Mean Girls. Yeah, we are. I'm going back to we're the gym. I'm not watching Mean Girls. Mean Girls and Wine. We're going to have a we're gonna have oh, girl night. We don't, I don't do girls night anymore. That, You know what? It's time for stupid news because it's getting pretty stupid over here right now. <laughs> what? I'm not stupid. I didn't call you stupid. My well, daughter, it's commercial. Okay. So apparently I'm You're being so stupid, stupid right now. Stupid. God, Karen, you're so stupid. Is butter a carb? We'll be right back. We, we're going to take a commercial break, and then we're going to do stupid news, but I... Mm Inravio.com wants you. Inravio provides the best in TV, film, post-production, and so much more. And we're growing. Right now, we're looking for a team of pros that can join us. So what are you waiting for? We need show hosts, production crew, marketing gurus, sales experts, audio engineers, lighting, visual effects, and camera crews. We want you. Go to Inravio.com backslash join the team.
Transmission of lice occurs from being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like catching a cold or a flu. You have guaranteed peace of mind in every bottle of Got Lice because all of our products are completely natural. And organic. But strong enough to cover all your lice removal needs while being safe and effective. Our professional technicians are specially trained with our exclusive proven technique to successfully comb out head lice. We come right to your home at your convenience. Whenever you want us. We bring everything needed to perform a successful and complete comb out while eliminating your head lice. And we leave you with our exclusive complimentary products to use for the next 10 days following our treatment for free our technicians also check all family members who have been exposed to lice please visit us on our website today at gotlice.co or feel free to call 24 hours a day seven days a week at 646-257-0121 Chris and Jake, and if in radio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. For 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. Hey guys, this is Kyle Melnick over at The Weekly Show. Be sure to vote for me over at Facebook.com slash Weekly. The Bully News Network, coming soon to Enravio.com, an all-new weekly show highlighting the latest news and information about the epidemic of bullying. Join Scott Hislop as he explores the issues with Dr. Michelle Golland, along with parents, teachers, and school officials, and many others affected by bullying. We'll tell stories together and work toward finding a solution to this rampant problem. The Bully News Network premieres Tuesday, September 9th at 6 p.m. only on Enravio.com. I'm going to try not to be stupid this time. <laughs> we're not going try to talk really about, hard. <laughs> we're not going to do girls night or mean girl. I, look, no, I, no. Tonight, I might go back to the gym. I'm going to go home. I'm going to have me a cup of brandy because I got a late day tomorrow. That's going to be my Wednesday okay. night. You do that. No mean Good. girl. I'm going to watch. Fine. I'm watching Whatever. the WWE Network. <laughs> do what you want. You can't get any more manly than that. <laughs> Yes. And they say I didn't have a talent. Try balancing a champagne glass on your ass. 
Sorry, it was just staring at me from the teleprompter. We're going to continue with stupid news. Those are the words tweeted by Kim Kardashian to describe her racy new cover shoot for Papers Magazine's winter issue. On one of the covers, Kardashian rocks a black sequin dress and, like she said, balances a glass on her famous derriere. In the second image, the 34-year-old reality star takes off the gown and poses nude, full moon and all. For our winter issue, we gave ourselves one assignment, break the internet. There is no other person that we could think of who is up to the task than the one and only Kim Kardashian West. A pop culture fascination able to generate headlines just by leaving her house, Kim is what makes the web tick. Paper Mag wrote on their website, we, tap, we taped legendary French photographer Jean-Paul Gaud to recreate his iconic champagne incident, shot and all we can say about the image inside, which we'll be releasing on Thursday, is holy effin' S-H-I-T. This issue has got so much more in store, so be sure to check back next week. Miss West took to Instagram to share the cover and posted this tweet. Paper Magazine's new cover alert. Such an honor to work with the legend Jean-Paul Gaud. Shot this in Paris. Can't wait for you to see the whole issue. She wrote on Instagram. That's what she said. Nice. <laughs> what are you thinking about? Did you like that butt picture? You did. He loved in it. In the words of the great Sir Mix-a-Lot, I like big butts and I cannot lie. But even if they're made of plastic, no, 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 ladies, squat, don't miss leg day, guys, too. But look, Kim, you're beautiful, you are Kanye, look out, but you are one of the <laughs> Kanye <laughs> about to be really mad. If, Ka if your woman. look, I'm not gonna steal your woman, man. trust me, girl. but look. Kanye Kanye's probably going to find me on Twitter, so I'm about yeah. to get crazy. All right. So you you are say. one of the most overrated females on the planet. Bang, bang, shots fired. And that's only because nice. you had a couple of sex tapes. A couple. A couple? Of sex tapes. I only knew one. Well, I don't know. One, whatever. I've never seen them, but we hear about it all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, she's a jersey chaser. She was Ray J, Reggie Bush. Whoever else it was, I mean, Chris listen, Humphreys for 45 minutes. The only thing days. I have really against it is this image that she's perpetuating of women, like we're all supposed to have this butt. I don't understand. No, 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 no. It's no, disgusting. No. That butt is not real. Nobody exists like that. Some girls have nice butts. Some girls have big butts. Look, I'm not one of those girls. I'm not, I have nothing against big butts. I can't. I think they're great. I can't agree but with you there. That butt's not real. I can't agree with you. Her butt Look might not that. be real. It might not be real, but I can't agree with you there That's because I have seen well put together derrieres. Mm hmm. What you don't see in this picture are her chicken legs, okay? And this is what I mean by don't skip leg day. I'm all for it. Yeah. It's nice, but it's not real. Right. It doesn't fit. Right. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't go, go together. with her body. That's cool. And again, Kim, I'm, don't get me wrong. You're beautiful. But, honey, you are overrated. You did not have to take this picture. That, that was extremely I tacky. just need to give a shout. I just need to say this. Women, we're all beautiful. It doesn't matter what shape or size we come in. We yes. all look good in any way that we are. And you don't need to have a fake big butt time to out. be beautiful. That's time what I'm out. saying. Since we're on this topic, I, I hope girls. I don't go over time. There was a story. It's this Calvin Klein model who is the new plus size model. Oh, this girl is a size. According to the report, she's a size 10. There is no way in the world that she is a size 10. And no, she, she probably is, is. She's a normal looking girl. I'm, me and all my sisters, okay, that's fine. the size we are. But she's not a plus size model. No. And so she's a regular girl. When, you, when, you, when you're a female and you, and you go shop in the plus size section, what is it? Size 16 is plus? Yes. Why is there a size 10 model modeling plus, plus size, size clothes? clothes? It doesn't make sense. I mean, we get, this is ridiculous. I am sick and tired of media telling all these women that you have to be this big to be beautiful. That is insane. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and it I have a good friend. Us. I have a good friend who works for Victoria's Secret. Shout out, Tiffany. You are doing big things. Uh, the Victoria's Secret fashion show is coming up on December the 9th, and I'm going to watch it to support you. I but, watch it too. but, I'm sorry. I don't find all the angels that attractive because they look they tiny. They're not. They don't. They don't work out. And they don't and have that Kim Kardashian booty. I, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> this, 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 I'm not talking about Kim Kardashian's, but I'm talking about the fact that 
to be a, a beautiful model, yeah. you have to be a, a, a rail. You have to be a size zero. And then to, to label a plus size model who is actually a size 10 and looks nothing close to a plus size model. That is, that's, it makes me sick. It makes me sick too. Because everything that I've done in fitness, in athletics, working with kids, working with young females, yep. all they worry about is being small. And I hate that because everyone's different. Yeah. I, Everyone's different I and agree. media is perpetuating this, oh, you have to be skinny, you have to be skinny. No, you have to be fit and healthy. Mm -hmm. Eat right, yep. work out. Whatever happens, hey man, it happens. They make clothes for everyone. Do what you gotta do. But, I mean, Calvin Klein, man, you wrong for that. You, you wrong. I'm sorry, that was, awesome. that was my that's little great. rant for the day. It's nice to see a man <laughs> I am who, so who sorry. understands the female psyche a little bit. I well, think that was really cool. I, I've done, I, I've coached a female dominated sport for yeah. about 15 years and to be honest I like meat on my bones my dad always told me the bone is for the dog <laughs> I'm not a dog I want some meat thank you that's awesome anyways we don't keep going with stupid news because uh, this one we is, just got real heated whew. yeah I'm gonna try to all right we're gonna get here try to bring it down but I'm gonna right get heated now. again Let's with go. this next story White supremacist organization, the Ku Klux Klan, is rebranding as the new Klan by trying to increase membership to Jews, black people, gays, and those of Hispanic origin. You heard that correctly. So I'm going to keep going, and you just keep that in your head real quick. Now, all those wanting to join the ultra right wing society will have to wear the white robes, masks, and conical hats. The Klan is estimated to have between 5,000 and 8,000 members, according to figures released in 2012. The requirements for joining the new KKK group, called the Rocky Mountain Knights, are to be aged 18 and live in the Pacific Northwest. John Abar, who has claimed that he is a former white supremacist, told the Great Falls Tribune, the KKK is for a strong America. White supremacy is the old Klan. This is the new Klan. However, the more traditional elements of the organization were unhappy about the direction that Abar is going in. Bradley Jenkins, Imperial Wizard, <laughs> Imperial Wizard? <laughs> you take yourself seriously, <laughs> calling yourself the Imperial Wizard? Okay. If I knew some lines from Harry Potter, I would hit you with my magic wand. <laughs> Anyways, Mr. Jenkins, the Imperial Wizard of the KKK, said that man's going against everything the bylaws of the Constitution of the KKK say. He's trying to hide behind the KKK to further his political career. In 2011, Abar, describing himself as a former KKK organizer, ran as a Republican for Montana's seat in the U.S. House of Representatives, reportedly believing that there would be backlash against President Obama's reelection. According to an Associated Press report at the time, Abar's manifesto included promises to legalize marijuana, increase mental health programs, keep abortion legal, abolish the death penalty, and save the white race. I don't think you have to save the white race. Anyways, at the time, mainstream Republicans <laughs> denounced Abar as a racist. There is no room for racism in our party, said Rich Hill, a former Republican congressman who lost the 2012 election for Montana's governor. That is not what we're about, and we have never been about that. I, don't even I think understand. it's very fitting that I myself. I don't understand. And, and that's fine. I, but I think it's very fitting uh, that I was fortunate enough to read this story. And I've been discussing this for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, there's no way. There's no way that the KKK, under any banner, under it, new, old, transitional, 2012, 2020, 3014, I don't care. The, the KKK is a WASP organization, white Anglo-Saxon. But the P stands for person, that's not even that. It's for white Anglo-Saxon males. The KKK is notorious for um, burning crosses. That, I, I don't it, understand what kind of political move is that? Like, oh, you know what? I'm going to get in the KKK, but we're going to make it not the KKK. It's going to be the KKK for everybody, and we'll hand out, like, treat. Like, no, I don't understand. I don't get it. I, 
<laughs> you know what, what are you standing for? It doesn't make any sense. It's disgusting. That is a disgusting organization. I can't I, talk about it. And and that's fine. You, you can't talk about it, but I can talk about it. Talk uh, about it. <laughs> talk about it. Like my man Ebro says on Hot Night. <laughs> talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. Um, th there's no way. Th this can't happen. And I'm going to keep saying there's no way because it's hard for me to come up with words that are okay for the camera mm -hmm. to describe what's really going on in my head. Yeah. As, a, as a young African-American male, it's tough for me to fathom that the new KKK would want me to be a part of their organization. Yes, put me, six foot three, 230 pounds, in a white robe and a cone hat. And, and then you represent and, everything and that then, that represented and for what? hundreds of years, then hatred of black Americans, of, it's just disgusting. It doesn't, make, it doesn't make any sense. Look, man, you can say whatever you want, but you cannot call yourself a former white supremacist. Nope. You have been labeled. And unfortunately, in this day and age, it's really hard to get away from labels. Stereotypes are, are rampant. And good luck. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, man, I'm rooting for you. Because if you can change whatever it is that the KKK stands for, I'm all for it. Because we don't need anything like that in this country. We don't need anything like that in this world. But you cannot say that you are trying to enhance diversity and rebrand the KKK because it's not going to happen. Because what I see happening right now is a civil war brewing in the KKK. You've got the old members who hold true to those bylaws, to that constitution that are going to come after you. Mr. Jenkins. And look, I'm like a KKK <laughs> you're member. not going to find any help with Jews, with blacks with Hispanics or with the GLBT community. You're not going to find any help. So it's going to be you Hello. and whoever, you, whatever other guys that you get to join the new KK. Oh, I'm sorry, the Rocky Mountain Knights. And uh, you're going to have to try to fight the old KKK because they're coming after you. And we're not going to help you. Nope. Ah. Good luck. Like you said. I'm going to stop right there because, again, I'm, I'm trying to stay cool for the camera. I want to make sure that I stay here, so I'm not going to say anything. You're passionate, that's get me and, in and you, you have to say something, so good that you said it. I like to call myself the gatekeeper. I like that. That's yeah. good. <laughs> All right. All right. You ready? All right. We're going to continue, but okay. that was good. I'm done. All right. As an auto shop worker, Rick Sullivan has had to repair cars that have been flipped over. Now he has modified a truck so that it looks upside down. Sullivan spent six months and $6,000 building the upside down truck from the parts of two separate vehicles, a 1991 Ford Ranger pickup truck and a 1995 F-150 pickup truck, body placed over the top, complete with spinning wheels. Sullivan got the idea for a topsy-turvy truck when he was called to transport an overturned Ford Ranger to his body shop. As you might expect, Sullivan gets a lot of attention when he drives the upside down auto around his hometown of Clinton, Illinois. It's kind of <laughs> weird. It would definitely freak me out. Uh, you know what, man? People are doing some crazy things. Maybe they can run I mean, over the is, KKK with this topsy turvy truck. That is, uh, That's the only way I could see these An two upside things. down truck? Like, where's the engine? What, what if I have to put groceries in the trunk? I don't know. Uh, what if I want to. <laughs> Put a bunch of my friends in the back. Oh, look at it! I like, never saw it. That looks yeah, really that's kind of cool. crazy. Like when I was in college, we had this 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 guy was riding around campus in an avalanche, Chevy avalanche, and he put a tarp in his back, and they filled it with water. I've seen that. And they that. just rode around campus with a that's you know cool. traveling pool. You can't do that in an upside down truck. You could do it. No, you can't. You could do anything in an upside down truck. Ooh, with that, <laughs> we're going to a commercial break since we can do anything out here. Hey everyone, it's Jenna LaCarrie. Make sure you vote for me at Facebook.com slash Inravio Weekly.
Welcome back, everyone. I finally calmed down. Um, okay. We had a great time this week. We I mean, did. I think we had some pretty juicy stories. We had some great stories. We had some great conversation. Compelling stuff. Very stuff compelling. Stuff that matters, actually. It's so nice. if you want to see it again, make sure you check us out on Facebook.com backslash in Radio Weekly or in Radio.com backslash in Radio Weekly. In Radio Weekly. It's okay. a thing. And we're going to be here. So you have to go and yes. vote for us. Yes. Um, but we're we going to get out of here. That. Yeah, we gotta go. You ready to go? Before yes. we go, mom, happy birthday. I love you. Brandon, happy birthday. I love you. Somehow my mom and my brother have the same birthday. It's kind of crazy, Aww. but um, you'll be getting You're a big something You're tomorrow. A big I can't tell you what it is, pink but shirt. I look. hey man, shout out to Bret Hart, Pink and Black Attack. Real men look good in pink. I agree. Yeah. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs>